Hi, and welcome to another edition of Between the Ropes TV. Guys, uh, today we're going to talk about the upcoming Savannah Marshall and Fenke Herman's card in Newcastle this Saturday night. It's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting card, um, particularly with these two fights that I'm going to talk about. Um, so today I'm going to break down the Savannah Marshall uh, and Fenke Herman's fight. Uh, I'm also going to break down the Florian Marco fight um, against Chris Jenkins at welterweight. Uh, over 10 rounds but before I go into those fights guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel guys and um, we've got some great content coming up this week uh, and some weeks to come so please um, please pay attention to the channel guys I'm going to go straight into the Savannah Marshall Fenke Herman's fight this fight is for Savannah Marshall's world title at middleweight um, it's over 10 rounds two minute rounds <clears throat> And uh, this is a really interesting fight because clearly we all know that this fight is building up to the Clarissa Shields battle. And we all know how big Katie Taylor and uh, Amanda Serrano fight is going to be at the end of next month. This fight, I can guarantee you, should it happen, and I believe it will happen, will be just as big. Will be just as big. Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall. Um Savannah Marshall, she's got a handful with this opponent. Um, she's tough. Uh, she went the she went the distance with Clarissa Shields back in two thousand and eighteen. Um, she lost over ten rounds, and you know she's she's fully fledged at middleweight. Um, she's tough. Uh, the Belgian, you know, she, um, yeah, she's lost. Uh, I believe she's lost three times, but um, you know she's lost a good company. She had back to back losses. Clarissa Shields in uh, 2018. She lost again in 2019, but she's had subsequent wins since then. So she's she's not she's not going to be um, she's not going to be a slouch if you like. But this is the thing with women's boxing: the lack of depth isn't there as compared to the men's. So where the men have different levels instead of um, prospects, journeymen, gatekeepers, contenders. Um, world level fighters, uh, world champions, elite fighters, women's boxing kind of lacks that. You have your prospects, um, then you kind of have your contenders and you have your champions. There's no real, there's no real in between. And the reason why I say this is because Savannah Marshall just seems to wipe everybody out who isn't a champion. Um, she just annihilates people. Um, she's on a, she's on a seven fight. <clears throat> Sorry about that guys. She's on a seven fight um stoppage streak um she's only went the distance twice in our 11 fights um and she's powerful and she's improving in every fight she's improving in every fight my biggest thing with savannah marshall switching over when she turned pro in 2017 was uh a footwork a footwork was a bit a little bit sluggish um which because she was getting used to the pro style and don't forget it's only two minutes she was finding it difficult to get a shots into range and get herself into range to land those big shots because her footwork was just, you know, um, her mind was th thinking quicker than her feet. But working with Peter Fury seems to seems to tackle that. She seems to be having no problem cutting off the ring, breaking people down, getting behind that jab, mixing up those shots, targeting people's body. And even those boxers that are clearly elusive, she's catching up to them and she's hurting them. And this is why some people are giving Savannah Marshall a greater chance against Clarissa Shields. I don't know how that fight's really going to go. Um, I kind of favour Clarissa Shields in that fight because she's more skilled. Um, she can hit and move. And I think the key for that fight is going to be the two-minute rounds. The two-minute rounds going to favour um, Clarissa Shields. I'll break that down closer to the time, guys. But I'm just going to focus on this fight. Take it one by one fight by... Uh, at a time um, and, and Savannah Marshall uh, I think she's just going to stop this girl I think she's going to stop Frankie. Um just like I was saying before I think she cuts off the ring really really well these days now um, I think her timing's exceptional she's got that head movement as well she's she's living up to the nickname of the silent assassin she's really patient and she she doesn't smother her work she doesn't rush nothing um, she's really, really, she's really, really on it. And I can see I want to make a big, big statement 
technically in front of a home crowd. She's from Hartlepool, but this is a this is a home crowd at Newcastle. I think she'll have a big win um, Saturday night. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, the other fight on the card that I really want to preview, Florian Marku against a good friend of the show, Chris Jenkins. Now, Florian Marku's got a record. Um, you know, I'm not buying it's a pallid record. What I would prefer to say it's a, it's a prospect's record. And what I mean by that is um, it's a typical, you know, sort of like a, a, t- a 11 and 0 record. I mean, yeah, he's, he's had the one draw. Um He's, he's had a, a couple of names on there, but I just want to break it down in the way I see it because, in my opinion, I, th- I thought he was lucky to get that draw against Jamie Stewart, who was, don't forget, he was 2-0 and at the time, Jamie Stewart. I thought he was lucky to get that. I thought Jamie nicked that. Um, also against Ryan Ryland Charlton. Um, he beat Ryland Charlton. Ryland Charlton knocked him down, but let's get it straight. Let's be honest. Ryland Charlton's a lightweight. And he was stepping up and he got that fight because of the emphatic win against Joe Laws. So all these Florian Marco fans will be saying, look how powerful he is. Look at them, this, look at that. But when he stopped running child and he stopped the lightweight, someone two divisions below, let's let's get that right. Um, against Chris Jenkins, people are talking about the losses Chris Jenkins has had. Um, what I would say about Chris Jenkins is this is a fully fledged, active welterweight who has got ambition and is coming to win. Florian Marku hasn't had that at welterweight. This is going to be a massive test for him. You know, he's a 27 fight veteran, Chris Jenkins. He's, um, you know, he's he's going to be tough. He's going to be dangerous for Florian Marku. He's got Florian Marku's got anything about him. He's going to have to box and he's sure that in his last two fights, to be fair, Florian Marku, that he isn't just a puncher. He's shown that he's got some boxing skills. Um, but he's he's getting on. He's 29. Um, and if they're wanting him to have, uh, you know, the big fight soon and they want to build him up to be potentially a, a star for Boxer on the Sky, um, on the Sky TV platform, he, he's going to have to look spectacular against Chris Jenkins. But I can see him having some problems. Um, I think Chris Jenkins is going to come in, use his all experience, make it rough, make it tougher. Marco, take Marco into places that make him feel uncomfortable. And Florian Marco is going to have to show how he's comfortable with that uncomfortable situation. Um, because that, that's what fighters have to come through if they want to be champions. They have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, but Chris Jenkins has, has got all the tools and the experience to do that. Don't forget, I know he beat um, Julius and, and Dongo in a, in a fight in February. Um, don't forget, guys, that this was the same in Dongo that fought Terence Crawford. This was the same in Dongo that, um, you know, two years prior, uh, you know, had a fight with um, the highly rated Kazakhstan Southpaw welterweight, um, Danny R. Yulis, uh, Yulisunov, um, who was promoted by Matchroom. And so, you know, Chris Jenkins has mixed it in good company, Um you know, and he, he comes from good stock, so he's going to be no pushover. This is going to be no easy fight for, for Florian Marku. Um, I would probably tip the win on points, um, but he's going to have to come through adversity to do it because I'm I'm not expecting it to be an easy fight. Um, the card is a, is an interesting card. There's loads of fights on this card, um, unusually. Um, last time I checked and counted, there was, there was, there was, over, there was over 11. I think it was about 13 fights. Um, there's going to be appearances from Nathan Gorman, Bradley Ray, um, Jose Stewart, the heavyweight from uh, Josh and Scott's neck of the wood, uh, next of the wood in in, in uh, Wolverhampton. Um, so so there's, there's a few prospects to look out for on that on that card. Um, so it's it's going to be really interesting. I'm I'm really enjoying the the boxing coming off to the to the northeast, and um, I think this is this is going to be our our third show up, up up in the area already, um, so I'm I'm hoping Savannah Marshall pulls through this fight, and we get the Clarissa Shields fight in the northeast. That'll be uh, that'll be a terrific way to to kind of uh, finish the year. But guys, let me know uh, what you think in the in the comment section. Um, hit us up in there, and uh, we'll see you on Saturday night um, for the the fight card review. Take care.